Morning guys, how's everyone doing? Um, hope everyone is well. Um, just sitting here waiting at the front of my shop for a very, very pretty car to turn up. Um, this one's nuts, a lot, a lot of restoration on it. Uh, totally changed from what I've seen before on this particular vehicle. Um, I'll go through more as it turns up, but yeah, we'll just have to wait for the trailers to turn up so we can uh, get this beast in the workshop. Hopefully it won't be too long, but obviously in the world of eating, it will be right now. I'll give you a quick sneaky peek. Check her out. Right, well, before he drives off, I better go and grab him. So, sorry guys, back in a sec. So, as you can see guys, stunning. Uh, we've got a TVR Speed 6, also known as a Swordfish. Um, loads of work on this one. So I'm just gonna check over it, make sure everything's all good. But we'll have it in the workshop very, very shortly. And there we go guys, absolutely stunning. Um, it's almost too bright out here. And annoyingly, the paint isn't clean. It's got a very fine layer of dust all over it. Hence why uh, you can see it's not popping as it should do. Um, honestly, one of my favorite looking cars. Um, ever since I used to go to the, um, uh, what do you call it? The car exhibitions down in London when I was younger and things. It was this, the Speed 12 had me fascinated with the way the cluster was at the front on that. Um, but then when you looked inside the car a bit further, you realized it was really just put together, not built together. But these are just stunning. So we've got a load of work to do on this. So I'll have it for a few days, but let me get it into the workshop over there and uh, we'll rock and roll forwards. If you're not sure how you get into these, that's not an indicator or anything like that. Press the button, when it drops and we should pop. So these got very funky, unique interiors. As I jump in, you'll see, extremely cool, keeps it very lightweight, um, very, very cool, funky prop display. Uh, let me power up, the immobilizer's probably kicked in, so let me just deal with that. All right, obviously I'll give you a proper fire up when we're actually in the workshop and things, but for the moment. Yeah, typical V8. Everything likes to wobble about a bit, so. Oh, there's some resins on these doors. Anyway, let me get in the workshop, stop mucking about. And to get out of them, no door handle. Actually that button up there, which I've got a feeling, not even thought about this. Um, we've got an oversized stereo going in. I hope it doesn't cover up his button. That'll be a, a fun one, but something we'll have to discuss. So right, we get out of these, it's very hot. And I'll give you a proper walk around. Right, so what we've got here is a TVR Tuscan 6, or Speed 6. Um, obviously probably most made famous for the film that it was in, uh, John Travolta um, being Swordfish. Um, so a lot of people call them Swordfish cars, for instance. So really unique. Um, not sure how many there are, to be fair, um, but this one's had a little bit different. So sadly, I can't get in here. Anyone who's got TVR know that this is a very annoying part that you can't easily get down in and show you. Um, but he's had an American V8 put in this which I've not seen one of these with a V8. Some people would say that's not a cool thing to do. Um, I personally think it is a very cool thing to do because these cars are meant to be unique items. They're not all meant to be the same thing. Um, you get one of these and it, it's yours, you personalize it. Yes, you could leave it stock, uh, a lot of people do because obviously they don't want to get involved in changing them. Um, but yeah, just an amazingly cool car. Things like you've got the brake lights and things built into this. Um, as you can see, there's not really a lot of lighting along the back here essentially these are mainly reflectors and things uh, indicators i believe happen up there last time i was in one that's what was happening so i guess it should be the same um but just really nice so these little things here these are like your air vent blowers so essentially people think oh pen holders and things but no that's going to blow cold air onto you these things get incredibly hot like like race car hot there's nothing in here to sort of make sure that the heat from that doesn't float back through and obviously because we've got mainly a composite body so it's all fiberglass um, the whole thing will get warm. It's all a continuous piece. So very warm from that. Got massive center housing, obviously that hides all the transmission, everything else along there. Um, but yeah, just a, one of my favorite lovely, lovely cars. 
All right, just familiarizing myself with the vehicle. Um, have a look over. So the basic plan, obviously, you can see we've got no stereo in there. So we're going to get a nice stereo. It, it's one of these new sort of floating screen ones. Um, it's an Evo SPH uh, 64 DAB. Uh, sorry, let's just try again. SPH Evo 64 DAB from Pioneer, um, which is a lovely screen that I think will get mounted lovely. And it's going to be just wide enough so that we just cover the aperture, but you still get to the buttons up on there. Um, we are going to be doing a little DAB antenna, which we're going to put in this glass, um, and we'll mount the microphone down somewhere around that relocation system, probably back in that little corner there. Now, regards to the door speakers, we're going to have some funny games. I've just emailed the customer and see what he wants to do. These are the older variants, and there's two things that are annoying about it. One, if you have a look at the angle of the glass there where it goes down, and the fact that this door card shallows in, that means that, say, behind here, if we just wanted to do a speaker here, for instance, we wouldn't have the depth to clear that, which obviously is a no-go. Can't do that. And obviously this bit, all very curved over, so no flat surface that you could just, say, put a speaker on there, and it would look a bit rubbish if there's just a tiny one on that. The second part that's fun is that they use aero-style plug connectors. So these are a populated pin system, so we'll have to get around that, which is a bit of fun and games in there. I don't know if you can see it, if it will focus, but it's... Uh, essentially like a twist lock plug. Um, I'll take these down in a sec so you can see inside the doors. They're very simple to come out, just a couple of bolts along the bottom edge down in there, and then the whole door card comes off. Rear speakers, uh, I think we can go for the large ones on the side there. They do come with some original cutouts, which are just other side of my finger here, little speaker holes there, uh, but obviously we can get much bigger speakers on that back panel, which you can see there essentially. Um, so yeah, so I'm just waiting to hear back from the customer and let me know if he wants me to go ahead with the re-fiberglass. The basic plan will be we'll rebuild this whole section here with a new speaker, MDF ring it, fiberglass it into the system, panel match it so it all matches all the contours on this and obviously picks up from that line there, it comes around. And it does mean that we'll have to re-trim all this in leather. So obviously this has been redone, so we'll have to make sure that we get the same leather for that. Um, but yeah, some fun and games. The amplifier will get mounted up, up under here. Um, the battery sits essentially up in the front, not easy to get to, but behind this panel, there is a way that we can uh, connect onto the battery terminal point from there. Um, and the rest of it is, yeah, off in a game. So I've just got to wait to hear what the customer wants to do about those. I'm probably going to start getting the DAB antenna in, getting the microphone, all the boring bits, get those all sussed in position, um, and we can move forward from there. So let me uh, show you the stereo and what we'll be fitting. All right, so that's the model unit there. Um, essentially it's a normal stereo, you get the normal sort of bits and pieces, so we've got the GPS antenna, we've got the fly loop at the back for all our pre-outs and pre-ins, obviously power harness, microphone, um, there's a little adapter on here to convert the USB from a USB-C over to a standard USB, and obviously we've got some mounting frame pieces. Now the stereo itself is just a, pick it up, just a weird little sealed unit, just got your normal Pioneer connections at the back for instance. And obviously the front of it, it's got a weird open piece because the screen, once you use that metal mount system, that screen will be able to float in front of here and we can set the angles of things. Um, and I think in the car, that would look really good to have that in that sort of position there. If I could get my hand out of the way so you can see roughly what it'd look like. Let's just put that in there. So something sitting about there really modernize it comes with the apple carplay android auto you get your bluetooth streaming get your digital radio um, and everything else you'd need from a nice little screen it's not a face off screen so it will stay in the car all the time um, but that would work lovely on that setup so um right i guess we'll do the dab antenna get the bluetooth in uh, get the microphone in sorry not the bluetooth um work out where we're going to trail the usb uh, there are a few little pocket bins around here for instance so you may want the ability to put the phone up here or potentially on that side there. Um, as you can see, this is all one long piece coming through here, so you don't really want to have it sticking out of anywhere random there. Um, but yeah, right, let me do some work, and I think we'll strip down that side, and we'll get the DAB in. I don't know if I'll show you, because it's just gonna be a case of putting a DAB antenna and stuff in, but um, we shall see. Right, we've got our first bit of funny games. Obviously, this unit is traditionally a doubled in, uh, and obviously you can sort of make it like a single in fitting, um, but annoyingly, the brackets, work as if they're going to be sitting up on top like that which makes that double height and that could screw in there really easy and my job would be done um but annoyingly in this scenario we're gonna to have to try and get the screen 
to sit about there-ish. So I'm gonna flatten down these, uh, just file them off essentially, file them flat, and see whether I can get those to line up with a couple of these and that will solve the problem. So um, I won't show you me going backwards and forwards in there a thousand times, but that's basically what we gotta do next. Right, I think the last time you saw me, I was just showing you that I was gonna file down those little bits on the side. Um, this has taken me a hell of a long time. So basically I had to build up a new little mounting frame for it, uh, leather trim the edges so it all kinds of hides away. Um, obviously sit it back as far as it can in regards to how much aperture space we've got. Um, but we're in guys, so let me just uh, twist the key and fingers crossed we get the Pioneer logo coming up. So uh, lovely jubbly, lovely jubbly. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while. Now, obviously, the, the annoying thing is I better check, actually, to make sure. Yep, that one's still good. And that one's still good. I have done these before, where you put everything back in, and then these don't work, and it's a right nightmare. So, right. So, we're in. Um, as you can see, I've already gone through the pre-setup, so I was trying to trick you. I knew it was going to work, to be honest. Um, but let's go through. So, obviously, we're in digital radio at the moment. And if I can actually press it where it needs to be pressed, that'll jump over. So we've got options for like Apple CarPlay, um, obviously digital radio, normal radio, Bluetooth. Um, obviously I can't show you Apple CarPlay because currently I'm filming on the device that I use, uh, i.e. the phone. Um, but yeah, so that's all in. Uh, we've got a little DAB antenna set up there. The microphone is just hiding down here. Uh, still got to move this cable because we've still got that one hanging down for what we need to do on that side. Um, obviously there's no sound at the moment because I haven't put the amplifiers in or anything. Literally it's taken me all day to come up with a nice solid solution to get that mounted in position. Um, but I'm really happy with the way it's come out to be fair. So we've got his USB connectivity there for when he wants to do the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So yeah, it's all in. Um, I'm having just a quick discussion with him about where he wants the amplifier and things. Uh, we are gonna go for up underneath the dashboard over here. So I've started to pre-run out some of the cables that I need, obviously new speaker wires running through to the speakers. And obviously we've got our RCAs and remotes and that drop down there. Uh, that box there is a heater box for the car for the heater control system, nothing to do with me. So don't blame me if it doesn't look tidy. Um, but yeah, no, it's all coming nice. DAB antenna was fun because you basically have to take all this off. I do apologize, I haven't filmed a lot of it. I kind of got zoned out on it and um, I just done what I've done for the last, God, however many years I've been doing this and that's just to do the work. Um, and I sort of neglect, uh, neglect the fact that I should really be filming it if you guys want to see it all. So um, I will show you a lot more. If we do the fiberglassing on the doors where we're going to rebuild these. So essentially it's a lot of work, I'll explain why. So obviously trip the door, uh, door card down, that's fairly easy to be honest. And I'll show you when I take the doors off, these come off really nice and easy. Um, then we can separate these two sections. What we basically got to do is sort of build up an MDF ring that's going to mount our speaker up onto here. Fiberglass that down so we continue these contours through so that it looks like it's actually part of it. Obviously bearing in mind things like where these are going to be. So obviously you can't just bring it up too high. So obviously be a little bit smart about it. Then do a process what we call panel matching. So obviously, if I just put a straight line up on there, yeah, I could probably get the fiberglass pretty close to it. Um, but obviously, for this sort of car, you want a nice solid finish. So we'll do a panel match after we've done all the fiberglass. Once we've done all the build up and everything else, then obviously it's the sound deadening to make sure that acoustically this is gonna be all right. Um, one of the great things about these cars is because it's fiberglass, you've already got quite a dense material to work from. Hence why a lot of people build fiberglass enclosures and things. So we're, we're kind of like a really large enclosure for sound. So it's kind of nice, um, but there is a lot of engine noise. You can hear the fuel pump running when these things go. So that'll be fun. Um, rear speaker scenario. That is where the factory speakers go. Essentially, you just get a little set of tens in there. The most common thing we do is to put some much larger speakers back here. Um, some people don't like it because they like this to be a, a nice big boot space, essentially to use and keep it open and not to change that. Um, so basically, I'm at the customer's discretion for, I don't know why I'm showing you there, you can't see nothing there. Customer's discretion, whether we go for some high quality little speakers back here or we get some larger speakers. Um, the reason we do it basically, if he wants more B line, if he wants more bass, so if he's a, a sort of a bass head, should we say, um, then obviously the larger the speaker, the bigger amount of air it can move, and the more bass you'll produce with the stroke of the speaker. Um, the smaller speakers are definitely better for your high definition and what you'd call your SQ side of things. So uh, we're gonna be getting 17 centimeter components, possibly coaxials. Um, I'm gonna ask him if he wants a separate tweeter up on the top here. Um, it's one of the annoying things when the customer is a long, long way from here, essentially, it's not something that you can just pop down and see. Um, 
and it's a pain to spec the car prior because obviously like i say this one he's actually he spends a lot of time in portugal with this car um so it's not something that he can just bring here i can spec up and yes you can do your checks and everything else but the customers don't know exactly the mark one mark two door cards and things um and yes you could get him to send pictures and things i think i did request but i don't think i got but anyway it's not a problem it's just part of what we have to deal with so uh, we've got the car here now um obviously i've got all the skills i need so uh, essentially it's just a case of picking the customer out what he wants um and hopefully we can get it done in the quick timeline that we've set ourselves for the project um i've got about three days to do the car which isn't a lot i've taken one day now essentially so we've prepped the amplifier wiring and we've got the head unit in this side of it on the speakers will be relatively easy there's nothing to trick with that each door will probably take me about a day to build um, and then obviously we've got to trim it as well so you'll see a bit of leather trimming you'll see some fiberglassing you'll see panel matching you hopefully see a whole load or the customer turns around and says that he doesn't want me to do the door cards and therefore we'll just put some better speakers in the back we may even go for say high quality side speakers and then still put the rear speakers in that section so he has got four speakers but the sound will be traveling a lot from the rear um in this size cabin it probably won't make a huge difference because we've got a very noisy engine but ideal world we want to be situated in the middle of the sound hence having speakers in each corner and that's the best way to get your sound because then you can feel like you're engulfing it and your ears aren't listening to a conversation happening behind you um anyway that's enough waffle of that uh, i'm gonna lock up for today what we're at about seven o'clock or so so i've definitely earned me day today um i don't think i need to rush anything else before we go i'll give it a quick start i'll make sure the battery's cool and everything else and you'll see us in the morning um I'll give you a cold start on the very first thing this morning, uh, very first thing tomorrow morning. So you can hear what one of these sounds like in a cold start because it is colossally good. Um, the engine in this thing, I, I need to find out some details about exactly what it is. Um, but yeah, you can tell it's a V8 all day long. So uh, anyway, guys, I will catch you in the morning. And it's the morning. So, right, let me get you down here. And I'll just go and fire this puppy up. Down a sec. Um, so the next thing, obviously, we got the stereo and everything in. I showed you that yesterday, so a bit quick with the camera. Probably make people a bit motion sick. Um, so essentially, now we've got to get the amplifier in. So I'm going to go from this little rock and gate. Uh, got the birth sheet there, essentially, and yeah, 132 watts RMS at two ohms. So plenty for what we need. We're going to be running four ohms on our systems. Um, but yeah, that's all the tech sheet. If you're ready to look, really nice to do this. I don't honestly know how accurate it is. I, I presume it is accurate. I've never actually gone through and actually double checked and seen what the figures come out at. Um, but I can take Royal Fosgate as not being liars, to be honest. So as you can see, tiny, tiny little amplifier. Um, all metal framed, essentially. It does get a little bit warm, but where we're gonna put it, we've got loads of air movement around it. Um, and obviously, yeah, it's a really smart little mini amplifier that will live up here. I'm gonna build up a little bracket and things. Um, you'll see all that, so. Right, let me get prepped for some of that. All right, just got a sheet of 5mm aluminium. Uh, ignore that, Ben, I'm going to cut that bit out. But essentially, that will sit on there and we'll do a little kick angle and that will give us a bit that we can fit up of there. We'll set over to band sort and we'll get that cut out. Right, now, just got to do a lot of that, dressing up the edges. want to see this so i'll jump forwards a bit all right it's all cleaned up now essentially just got rid of any of the rough edges because i don't want to cut anyone's hands as they go up there obviously i'll check it over now and make sure that isn't going to happen so yeah just brushed over the surface make it all shiny again i'm uh, just going to put a little kick angle in that and um then we should be able to be get the amplifier in and as you can see that's sort of effect we're going for there so then i can mount that up in there and the amp will sit lovely on that so all going to plan 
Right, as we can see, we've got the four holes all made out now. Um, I've just counted sunk them slightly, just to hope that we get a bit more grab, essentially, on those in there. Uh, counts in front and back. So that should thin the metal out a bit, and it may mean that these recess down so the amp actually sits flat on there, which will be better, because then it'll help get a bit of a heat out of the amplifier onto this sort of radiator-style uh, metal police radiator style, what I'm all about. That'll help get a bit of a heat out of there, and obviously transfer a little bit into that metal sheet. So, right, let's get these in and see how they rock and roll. Right, so that's that bit complete. So uh, that should work out lovely. And if we did everything right, we should have all those lined up. So, yeah, winning. Right, I think it's ready to be mounted up now. Uh, just give it some little detail in there, just so we get the speaker wires, uh, sorry, the power cables through better on that, just to make sure it doesn't catch. And yeah, the rest of that, that will mount up and um, yeah, should be good as gold. All right, let's get it in the car. All right, so we've got that metal plate. Essentially, I don't know if you'll be able to work out what angle I'm looking at, but that will go up there. And I'll say that's bolted into the side there. And that will give us a nice solid bit there to mount the amplifier on, which will basically end up looking like that once it's in position the phone's probably right out of focus and everything else but yeah basically the amp's under there and i'm trying to show you and obviously i don't think you'll see a bit of it when it's up here so if we get that on the plate yes yeah, so that'll just sit there lovely and loads of space in front of it to let it cool down so all good with that bit and now that we've done all the amp stuff down there essentially we may as well I'll just take this back panel off so you can see um essentially just start getting speakers in here so obviously we're gonna have to move some stuff about um we're gonna have two six and a half inches firing forwards from here um yeah it looks like there's a few things we can't move and a few things we can move so all right let me get that all sorted that's a bit better all right i've sort of got to the stage now where i've got to make the holes in the back here for the speakers um so i've got a template already and set to rock and roll um but obviously it would be really useful if i can get to both sides of this at the same time um, so let me show you a little trick. Let me go and put this somewhere safe. And now, as you can see, get down here and do my thing. Just show you the rough cut holes that go through for the speaker position. And that's what's going in there. And there we go, all in. Just gotta get the grill on that one, just thought I'd show you what it is. Obviously we can tilt the tweeters on the tie pod to give us a bit of up profile for that. Like that should look all good all right let's do those little side ones which you can just spot through with me finger out right through there and uh that should be the speaker course done for the moment all right so we've got the two alpine type pars in at the lower section there obviously you can see we've got a pair of focal 10 centimeter ones annoyingly alpine don't do a type R 10 centimeter it would be nice to have a matching set right then i guess the next bit will be just to sort out the mess of cables down there obviously there's a lot of it you, you always have excess essentially when you uh, run cabling through so a lot of that will be stripped out uh stripped back essentially um and yeah i think we're almost there all right then i think we're all done uh amplifiers all in position uh, i think you can probably just make out the bottom of it there just that little bit in the corner of the screen that you can see on the corner of the screen the little bit sticking out um obviously all the cables hidden away for that side of it obviously we've got the lovely speakers at the back there so there's a horrible glow coming off this light. Let me just get that one. Oh, that button doesn't feel, there we go. Okay, it's a muckabout button. Can it stay? So yeah, obviously you've got the focals and the alpines. Um, does sound good to be honest. Typically, it's really tough doing a car audio shop and not being able to demo a lot of music. I need to get some copyright free music. Um, but then it's stuff that you guys the best way of getting to music is to actually something hear something rarely. that you're um let me just turn it down a sec 
the best way to demonstrate music is to let you hear something that you're familiar with. Um, but yeah, I'll figure that out essentially. Um, obviously we've got digital radio at the moment, reception is a little bit bad there essentially because we got the shutter down. Um, but yeah, we've got all the features on here that we'd need. But no, it's um, all good as gold. So really cool little dashboard. I don't know if I've shown you enough of the car or not, to be honest. I think the guy for the moment, he didn't want to go for the mad speaker build just yet. Um, he said, just do the backside of it and get that a bit sorted because he has just had these retrimmed. And obviously he said it'd be a shame to redo them after they've just been done. So I think once he gets a little bit bored of the audio, then we'll get him back in and we'll do the build up for that. And we'll probably follow suit with another set of Alpine type bars because they do sound really good in here. Uh, see if we have got any music by now or if we've just got the news. The major title ever. And it's the first British woman to no. win one since Virginia Wade at Wimbledon in 1977. Well, at least I can't actually get on for copyright for someone listening to the news. Well, I don't think you can anyway. Um, anyway, guys, thank you really, really much for watching it. Um, been quite a lot, obviously. I didn't know what I was going to do with the door side of it, whether that was going to be a good thing to do or a bad thing to do to show you. Um, sadly, we never got the opportunity to do it anyway, but obviously we've shown you a bit around the car um, and what it's like to work on the CVR. They're, they're fun and games, to be fair. They're, um, they're all hand-built, so a lovely bit of kit. Um, is going to need essentially the amplifier and everything else to get past this engine sound because it has got a really really re loud rev on it i'll try and get a little bit more description of what engine it is and bits and pieces maybe i'll put that in the description below um but i don't know exactly and to be honest it's hours of work trying to get into the actual bonnet of one of these so i'm not going to do that um but thank you guys hopefully you've enjoyed it um it's been a fun one don't see too many of these um but i've done a few in the past you probably look at my website we have got quite a few tvrs now so i guess i'm a lucky lad for that um but anyway guys thank you very much i think the next thing i'm going to be showing you will probably be it depends on when this one comes out um, i've got some fiberglass to do in a new subaru impreza uh building up a custom box on the side of the uh, boot for that that'd be fun and um yeah anyway guys like and subscribe if you've um, liked the video then great thank you very much um subscribe if you want to see more content like this and obviously i will catch you on the next one